The Honorable, the Chief Justice of the High Court of Kerala, Justice S. Mani Kumar, Honorable Judges of the High Court of Kerala, Justice K. Sami Dare, former Judge of the Pajas High Court, Honorable Judges of the High Court of Kerala, former Judges of this Honorable Court present here, President of the Kerala High Court Advocates Association, Chairman of the Bar Council of Kerala, and the Chairman of Bar Council Tamil Nadu. President Kerala High Court Senior Advocates Association, the President Federation of Human Lawyers Kerala High Court Unit, Law Officers of the State, Deputy Solicitor General, Senior Central Standing Council Taxes, and other Law Officers of the Central Government, Senior Advocates, Esteemed Fellow Members of the Bar, Registrar General, Registrars and Staff of the High Court, Srimadi Biola Rajakumari, Wife of Justices Manikumar, Dr. Sahitya M. Niranjali, daughter of Justice S. Mani Kumar, Sri Shiva Kumar, his Lordship's son-in-law, and Sri M. Satyadev, his Lordship's son, friends and other family members of Justice S. Mani Kumar, 
staff of the Educate General's office, Educate clerks, ladies and gentlemen. On account of the compulsion of the constitutionally predetermined timeline of a judicial career, the occasion has now arisen to bid farewell to our Chief Justice, Justice S. Manikumar, who is demitting office on attaining superadmission in the forenoon of 24-4-2023. Couplet 111 in Chapter 12, Impartiality of Book 1, Book of Virtue of Tirukural, can be conceptualized and explained in English thus. Equity in considering all with equal regard is a preeminent virtue. Justice may be called good only when it is imparted impartially, regardless of the class of people. I can, without any fear of being controverted by anyone, according to the unanimous opinion of the entire bar, say for certain that your lordship in the matter of justice dispensation have been preeminently impartial by remaining loyal only to law and unfailingly providing a level playing field in the court to all appearing lawyers, irrespective of their seniority in the profession. It is said that simplicity is the keynote of all true elegance and humility in the solid foundation of all virtues. That your, your Lordship is an embodiment of elegant simplicity and humility is thus reflected from the fact that your Lordship customarily addressed one and all in the bench from the bar and among the staff as sir. Your Lordship was born on 24-4-1961, your Lordship's father, Justice K. Swami Dure, was a judge at the Madras High Court and is witnessing this solemn function. Your Lordship graduated in chemistry with first class from Ramakrishna Mission Vivekananda College, Chennai, and wanted to pursue engineering, but destiny had it otherwise. Your Lordship obtained BL degree from Dr. Ambedkar Law College, Chennai in 1983 and enrolled as a lawyer with the Bar Council of Tamil Nadu on 23-11-1983. Your Lordship successfully practiced for nearly 23 years in the Madras High Court, the then Tamil Nadu State Administrative Tribunal and the Central Administrative Tribunal. Your Lordship's practice was predominantly in constitutional, civil and service matters. In recognition of Your Lordship's legal acumen and enterprise, the government of Tamil Nadu appointed your lordship as its counsel in the then state administrative tribunal and on the civil side in the Madras High Court. Your lordship was the later appointed in the additional, as government, additional government leader for the government of Tamil Nadu at the Madras High Court. Your lordship was also the standing counsel for various universities and the panel counsel for various public sector undertakings and cooperative institutions. Your Lordship also served as the Senior Central Government Standing Council at the Madras High Court, which post was later redesignated as Assistant Solicitor General of India. Your Lordship had also represented the registry of the Madras High Court in service matters before the Madras High Court. Your Lordship was elevated as an additional judge at the Madras High Court on 31-7-2006 and was made a permanent judge from 9-11-2009 onwards. Your Lordship assumed office as the Chief Justice of this Honorable High Court with effect from 11 10 2019. It was Justice Muhammad Ahmad Ansari, the third Chief Justice of this Honorable High Court, who was the first to be appointed as such from among the judges whose parent High Court was another court. Justice M.A. Ansari was a judge at the erstwhile Hyderabad High Court and later at the High Court of Unified Andhra Pradesh. However, his lordship was transferred as a judge of four of our High Court sufficiently early before being appointed as the Chief Justice. Justice V.S. Malimuth was the first Chief Justice of our High Court to be directly appointed in pursuance of the judicial policy of appointing the Chief Justices of High Courts from among judges of other High Courts. There have been 21 honorable judges who have been Chief Justices of this honorable High Court, who 
whose parent high courts were other high courts. Despite Madras High Court being the high court having jurisdiction over the immediate neighboring state of Tamil Nadu, and despite the areas of this state which formed part of British Indian districts of Malabar and South Canara having been under its jurisdiction, your Lordship was the first judge whose parent high court was the Madras High Court to be appointed as the Chief Justice of this Honorable High Court. I am not forgetful of the fact that Justice A.R. Lakshmanan, whose parent High Court was Madras High Court, was Honorable Acting Chief Justice of this Honorable High Court, as his Lordship then was, and Justice B. Subhashan Reddy was the Chief Justice of both this Honorable High Court as well as the Madras High Court. Your Lordship will be demitting office after having had the longest tenure as the Chief Justice of this Honorable Court in the past three decades. Your Lordship's judgments were well considered and recent ones, were always reflective of the contentions of either sides to the list, and none of such contentions went unanswered or unconsidered. Your Lordship never delayed delivery of judgments reserved. Nearly 900 hitherto undecided principles of law were laid down by benches headed by Your Lordship in the near two, four years in this high court, of which nearly one year was lost due to COVID lockdown and restrictions, reveals the tremendous amount of judicial work put in by Your Lordship. Your Lordship never lost judicial temperament, and not a single instance of Your Lordship having lost cool in courtroom can be recollected by anyone. Your Lordship religiously adhered to the principle that the judges spoke through their judgments and that accountability was lost when oral regimes prevailed. Your Lordship, during courtroom exchanges with the bar, never sensitized sensitive matters, shunned the momentary fame that a judge might acquire by blitzkrieging lawyers with queries in high decibels, and always cared not to provide order for the speculative media to convert the courtroom into an arena of increasing their TRP ratings. An avid cricket enthusiast, Your Lordship was the captain of the Madras High Court cricket team. It was at Your Lordship's initiative that India High Court Fraternity Cricket Championships were organized. This provided enough recreation of, for Your Lordship's peers in the bench, those from the bar and also members of the High Court staff from the otherwise monotonous working lives. It's often said that crisis brings out the best in leaders. And the entire world was forcefully brought to halt on account of the unprecedented COVID pandemic. Your Lordship led this Honorable High Court and its stakeholders from the front with a definite and strategic crisis management plan to attain the distinctive purpose of ensuring that justice dispensation system in the state functioned as efficiently as possible. With the limitations of the then nascent e-initiatives, of this Honorable Court, Your Lordship innovatively chartered the course for a revamp of this court's functioning. The challenges of conducting the courts during COVID times were first met through virtual hearing with the aid of proprietary video telephony software programs of cases filed by way of email, then a unique court management system, the first of its kind in the country was developed. This court management system caters to the entire process from e-filing of cases to issuance of certified copies of orders. Your Lordship certainly can <coughs> demit office with the satisfaction of having resulted in the greatest revolutionary change in the history of Honorable Court in matters of e-initiatives. Your Lordship revolutionized the functioning of the district judiciary also, taking the e-initiatives to their end. Your Lordship chartered such courses with the first full belief that the system was for the benefit of the public at large. Even while embracing technology to meet the challenges of the future, Your Lordship had shown considerable concern in allaying the genuine apprehensions of all stakeholders, including the bar and the advocate clubs. Your Lordship's tenure saw umpteen infrastructural developments in this honorable court including installation of digital conference system and starting a family counseling center. 
The Martyrs Column installed in the precincts of this Honorable Court as part of the 75th anniversary of Indian independence will forever stand as a towering testimony to your Lordship's patriotic sense and concern for those who gave up their lives fighting for the freedom of the country and for protecting its sovereignty and territorial integrity. Your Lordship have initiated infrastructural development projects worth Rs. 523.5 crores in the District Judiciary as many as 69 courts, inclusive of 55 temporary courts to fast-track trial of POXO cases, were started during your Lordship's tenure. Your Lordship has had put in nearly 13 years as a judge of a chartered high court. Your Lordship came to the bench with vast experience of more than two decades of successful practice in a chartered high court, during which period your Lordship was the law officer of the Union and state governments as well has represented various other institutions, including the Madras High Court. Your Lordship had put in nearly four years as a Chief Justice of this Honorable High Court. Your Lordship's judicial years have been spent only for dispensation of justice, which Your Lordship have done as satisfactorily as possible. I find no reason whatsoever for not elevating Your Lordship to the Honorable Apex Court. I leave it at that, for the laws of the Supreme Court was Kerala's gate. Your Lordship's wife, Srimadhi Bula Rajagumari, who was a practicing lawyer for 15 years and who ceased to practice on Your Lordship's elevation, Dr. Sahitya M. Neranjali, son-in-law, Sri Sivakumar, and son M. Satyadev, a final year LLB student, are also present on this occasion. On behalf of the entire legal fraternity of the state of Kerala, I wish my Lord more and more years of happy and fruitful life ahead. Thank you. The Honorable Mr. Justice S. Manikumar, Chief Justice, High Court of Kerala, Honorable Judges of Kerala High Court, former Judges of this Honorable Court, Justice K. Narayana Krupp, Justice A.K. Bashir, Justice Siri Jagan, Justice P.S. Gobinathan, Justice K. Abdul Rahim, Honorable Mr. Justice K. Swami Diday, former Judge, High Court of Madras, Advocate General Sri K. Gobala Krishna Kurup, Deputy Sol Additional Advocate General Sri K. P. J. Chandran and Sri Ashokam Cheryan, Deputy Solicitor General for High Court of Kerala, P. S. Manu, Director General of Prosecution Sri T. A. Shaji, Additional Director General of Prosecution Sri Gracious Kuriakos, State Attorney Sri N. Manoj Kumar, Senior Advocates Association President Sri N.N. Sumabala, Senior Central Government Standing Council for Taxes, Senior Advocate Sri P.K. Devindran Ramenon, Chairman of the Bar Council of Kerala Sri K.N. Manil Kumar, Secretary of the Kerala High Court Advocates Association Sri T. Naveen, Primati P.K. Sandamma, President of the Kerala Federation of Women Lawyers, Respected Senior Lawyers, Esteemed Brothers and Sisters of the Bar, Family Members of Honorable Mr. Justice S. Manikumar, Registrar General and Registrars of the Kerala High Court, Law Officers of the State and Central Government, Staff of this Court, Advocate Clerks, Three, Advocate Amal Raj, Chairman of the Tamil Nadu Bar, Bar Council, Ladies and Gentlemen, It's a great privilege to stand before you today to express our love, admiration and respect for Honorable Mr. Justice S. Manikumar, the Chief Justice of this Honorable Court, as he concludes his tenure over 16 years of dedicated judicial service. His, I'm not going deep into the, your Lordship's early career life, as the Honorable Advocate General has already mentioned it in details. On October 11, 2019, your Lordship took the oath as Chief Justice of this Honorable Court, marking the beginning of a truly remarkable tenure. Both the Court and the Legal Fraternity fondly remembers this illustrious tenure as it was studded by a series of exceptional achievements unparalleled, reflecting unparalleled leadership qualities. Your Lordship's distinguished career as a judge is truly remarkable. With over 100 reported judgments, your Lordship's Exceptional accomplishments are enviously admired by others within the legal community. 
known for your lordship's meticulous attention to deta details, the judgments reflected a thorough examination of every aspect of a case. When hearing cases, your lordship displays admirable patience, ensuring that all parties involved have an opportunity to present their arguments, which is deeply appreciated by the members of this bar. The compassion for the weaker and marginalized sections of the society is evident in your lordship's judgment as it consistently demonstrates empathy and understanding. In Kabir C. alias Anira Kabir versus State of Kerala, your lordship's judgment ensured the free supply of medicines to the transgender community. It also directed the state government to take necessary steps to issue identity cards and ration cards to the transgender individuals when they approach competent authorities. In Basil Atipati versus State of Kerala Water Authority and others, your lordship's intervention ensured that adequate compensation was received by the legal heirs of the workmen who died inside the manhole of Kerala Water Authority sewage pipe. The Kerala High Court and the Kerala Judiciary surmounted several challenges during your lordship's tenure in, the, in this court. The threat posed by the COVID-19 pandemic to the life of the people and proper functioning of the justice dispensation system was effectively conquered by an advanced technology and hybrid courts. Your Lordship's efforts ensured timely justice for those in need. Your Lordship's tenure as Chief Justice of the High Court of Kerala marked the beginning of numerous technical and modernization endeavors which within the Kerala judiciary. The e-filing system introduced in the Kerala judiciary is now followed as an exemplary initiative throughout India. This achievement has garnered accolades for the Kerala judiciary, setting it apart from other states. The implementation of the neutral case citation and offering judgments copies in vernacular languages are just a few initiatives aimed at making the judiciary more accessible to the general public. The wellness room for the female advocates and staffs, family counseling center, refurbished dispensary and baby care center, along with numerous other initiatives introduced at the Kerala High Court, serves as a testament to your Lordship's concern for the well-being of those around you. The Victim Rights Center, initiated for providing quality legal assistance to the victims of the crimes, stands as proof of your Lordship's compassion towards the vulnerable and marginalized sections of the society. Justice Manikumar is a humble and down-to-earth individual who remains unaffected by the allure of prestigious designations and positions. His affinity for the legal fraternity is well known as he consistently fosters strong connections with fellow lawyers and jurists. The gathering organized on January 3rd, 2023, which brought together judges, advocates, staffs, and clerks of this court was unique and widely appreciated. Outside the courtroom, Justice Manikumar's passion for sports is immense. An avid athlete, he has participated in football, cricket, and hockey, and captaining the Tamil Nadu judges cricket team. This sporting background has imbued him with an abundant sportsman spirit which has further enriched his ability to maintain warm relationships with everyone he encounters. In both his professional and personal life, Justice Manikumar's qualities truly set him apart as an exceptional individual. The family members of Justice S. Manikumar, his father, Honorable Mr. Justice K. Swami Duday, wife, Bhula Rajagumari, son, Mr. Satyadev, and daughter, Dr. M. S. Sahitya, and daughter and son-in-law, Sri Shivakumar, are present on this occasion. It is essential to acknowledge the unwavering support of his family, who have been a constant source of strength throughout his remarkable career. Justice K. Swami Dure, the proud father of Justice S. Manikumar, find a reference more often in his conversations. The foundation that he had laid for his life and career is continuing through the incredible legacy of his son. To bid farewell is painful, especially to a person who was embodiment of courtesy, compassion, wisdom, and a lot more good virtues. On behalf of the Kerala High Court Educates Association, I would like to express our deepest gratitude to your lordships for the invaluable contributions and dedications you have consistently demonstrated throughout your tenure. 
we the members of the bar bid your lordships a fond farewell farewell and extend our heartfelt wishes for good health as you continue to provide invaluable service to the public and our nation thank you honorable mr justice yes mani kumar chief justice high court of kerala justice k swami dorai mrs bula rajakumari and other family members of our chief justice my esteemed brother and sister judges distinguished former judges of this court mr k gopalakrishna kuru the learned advocate general kerala mr k p jaychandran and mr ashok yam cheriyan learned additional advocate general mr s manu learned deputy solicitor general of india mr k n anil kumar chairman bar council of kerala mr n n suguna palan president of the kerala high court senior advocates association mr baiju the vice president kerala high court advocate association esteemed law officers of the central and state governments respected senior advocates dear members of the bar registrar general and other registrars of this court directors of the kerala judicial academy member secretary kalsa director kerala mediation and conciliation center dear advocate clerks officers and staff of this court ladies and gentlemen namaste we have assembled here to bid an affectionate farewell to our beloved chief justice honorable mr justice s mani kumar on his demitting the office of chief justice of kerala high court on attaining the age of superannuation after an eventful tenure of 3 and 1/2 years this lordship is the first chief justice of this court from the state of tamil nadu in a span of 38 years of history of this court his lordship had the second long stint as the chief justice of high court of kerala after late justice v s malimath who ranks first he had an illustrious practice as a lawyer as has been stated by the other speakers represented institutions statutory bodies and authorities qualified himself for consideration as a judge of madras high court on 31st of july 2006 mr justice mani kumar was sworn in as additional judge of the madras high court and on 9th of november 2009 as a permanent judge our eventful association with mr justice mani kumar started with his assuming office of chief justice of kerala high court on 11th october 2019 after 5 months of assuming office the normalcy of life was affected by covid 19 the first challenge was definitely daunting and clueless the administration of justice and the normal functioning of the judiciary were challenged by the pandemic your style of functioning has showcased the variabilities as the head of the judiciary in the state adulation of your contribution as an accomplishment in my speech for what i know personally about you you feel uncomfortable dear chief justice but not referring to your contribution to this institution would be failing in my duty your leadership abilities appreciation of the necessities of a situation inclination to experiment and employ the right hands and heads to deliver the undeliverable during the pandemic is a major hallmark under your administration history is replete with replication of the module of the kerala high court by a few other high courts and the credit goes to your lordship having sensed the success of these initiatives your lordship encouraged and continued the support to all the it initiatives of the high court of kerala so that 
the kerala high court stands where it is in the digital map of our country under your leadership the e initiatives include 100% e filing in the high court setting up of eight paperless courts shifting of movement of administrative files to e office mode implementation of neutral citation publication of judgments in vernacular language digitization of court records to mention a few of your contributions to this court infrastructure to the judiciary is an important component for actualizing the right to access justice i am informed that as a result of the efforts taken by you projects worth 523 crores have been sanctioned by the state government for the district judiciary and 69 new courts have been established during the tenure of our chief justice as far as the high court is concerned various projects worth 50 crores have been sanctioned for infrastructural developments and for securing for strengthening the security measures our chief justice is a true democrat in the resolution of issues the most similar approach of his lordship is to listen discuss and decide the matters on administrative side the success of your approach is evident in all spheres of higher and district judiciary in the state of kerala the testament to these achievements is the souvenir released on 10/4 2023 in your perspective you have balanced the past the present and the future your idea and vision vision to respect the sacrifices of martyrs in commendable and resulting in unveiling of martyrs column in the precincts of the high court the martyrs column is the first of such an initiative by any high court in the country due to paucity of time i am not venturing into all the initiatives taken by and completed by our chief justice mentoring program initiated for the judicial officers in the state and the institution of best employee award for the employees of the high court are equally worthy of mentioning as the brain child of our chief justice it is worthwhile to place on record india justice report 2022 the report acknowledges that kerala high court tops the chart in the case clearance rate the case clearance rate of the kerala high court is 156% as against the all india average of 95% the division bench presided by our chief justice has 252 reported judgments in law journals and 125 are authored by you you have played the role from the forefront and inspired other judges to discharge the noble duty of adjudication this shows you are a true team captain of the high court of kerala being the patron in chief of the kerala state legal services authority the kerala judicial academy and the kerala state mediation and conciliation center our chief justice has provided able and dynamic leadership to the activities of these institutions and their performance has received recognition in the nation you have been my neighbor for 3 and a half years but as a good senior judge you have been in the hearts of judges advocates and the employees of the judiciary the affability with which you received any person seeking your guidance on an issue either personal or official is certainly benefited by your guidance and advice the authority of your distinguished office has not set up any barrier in consulting you for guidance and advice to the family members of judiciary on a personal note i wish to describe our honorable chief justice in four words simple noble and an able personality i am sure after retirement assignments of high profile will definitely come his lordship's way befitting the status of chief justice of this court on behalf of my brother and sister judges the entire judicial fraternity including the judicial officers of the state of kerala 
and on my behalf i wish the honorable the chief justice and his family the very best in all spheres of individual and collective existence excellent and pursuit of happiness before concluding i may quote the words of mahatma gandhi there are no good boys for us wherever you are you will always be in our hearts thank you one and all my esteemed brother and sister judges honorable justice narayana kuru for my acting chief justice mr c k abdul rahim chairman of the kerala administrative tribunal justice ak washir justice sri jagan justice ts gopinathan Mr. Gopal Krishna Kuru, Learned Advocate General, Mr. Ashok Cherian and Mr. Jayachandran Dhanan, Additional Advocate General, Mr. Ravindranath Menon, Learned Senior Standing Counsel, Government of India Taxes, Mr. Shaji, Director General of Prosecutions, Mr. Gracious Courier Course, Additional Director General of Prosecutions, Mr. Manoj Kumar. Learned State Attorney, Mr. Manu, Learned Deputy Solicitor of India, Mr. Anil Kumar, Chairman Bar Council of Kerala, Vice President of the Kerala High Court Advocates Association, Mr. Sugana Balan, Learned Senior Advocate and President of the Senior Advocates Association, Vice President of the Kerala Federation of Women Lawyers. my respected senior lawyers my dear junior lawyers registrar general and other registrars of this court staff of this court members of the advocates clerks association kerala samal ram president of the tamil nadu and puducherry bar council mr janapal advocate madras high court mr balakrishnan Mr. Suresh Kumar, Mr. Muthu Subramanian, Assistant Registrar of the Madras High Court, Mr. Ulaganathan, Section Officer, Protocol Wing of the Madras High Court, Mr. Rajesh, Mr. Mahendran, Mr. Kadrivel, Staff of the Madras High Court, Press and Media, Ladies and Gentlemen, Good afternoon to all of you. I commence my address by quoting the famous Tamil poet Indian Pugundanar, who had said thus: "Yadam ure yavam keli." The translated version means, "All the places on earth are our towns, and all the people are our relatives." At the outset, I would like to express my sincere thanks. to brother honorable justice s p bhatti learned advocate general of kerala learned vice president of the kerala advocates association for the kind words showered on me and on my performance as the chief justice of this court although i am left bewildered as to whether those are well deserved since it is my last speech in this court hall i seek the permission of the honorable judges and others to give me more time after completing my graduation in chemistry the initially my ambition was to become an engineer it was my father's desire that i should pursue law even after some time i felt that this particular profession was not suitable to me because i felt i 
district judiciary's performance in the sense that not the officers, the staff, was not satisfactory to me. And therefore, though there was some situation and sort of depression from my parents, I wanted to become a policeman. I went to Delhi to have a short-term intensive course to become a civil servant. I did make uh, an attempt. I was not successful. So I came back to the profession and joined my father. During my practice, I had the blessings and advice of many well-wishers. Honorable Justice A.P. Shah, the then Chief Justice of the Madras High Court and later on the Delhi High Court. Honorable Justice P. Sadashiv, who later on became the Chief Justice of India. And Honorable Justice Kappa Vinayakam, who later on became the Chief Justice of the Jharkhand High Court, who recommended me for judgeship. When I was sworn in as Chief Justice of the Kerala High Court on 11th October 2019, I had mixed feelings, a sense of satisfaction of what I had done thus far in my professional career as a member of the Madras Bar, then as a part of the bench of the Chartered High Court. And there was also a feeling of trepidation about what the future has held for me in a new place among new people. However, all my apprehensions were laid to rest the moment I stepped into this campus. The warmth with which I was received, the affection showed by the members of the bar, the registry, the people of the state in Kerala, and above all, my beloved brother and sister judges of this court made me to realize the bondage of Tamil Nadu and Kerala. For me personally, the simple objective when I took over here as Chief Justice was to live up to the confidence reposed in me by my superiors by outperforming myself even better than what I had done in my parent high court. And to do justice to the new role that was conferred on me. After a few months of assumption of office as a Chief Justice here, the unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic spread its tentacles and posed a challenge for all spheres of life. The situations we face then through married challenges which are likely to encounter in future. One such challenges was to take with the aid of technology, the justice dispensation system to a level where under any situation the normal court functioning should not get disrupted. As that age goes, necessity is the mother of invention. The Honorable General of the Computerization Committee, the IT team, steamed the Salina Nair, the then Registrar of Computerization, with the active cooperation of the bar, staff of the court, members of the clerks association, showed the way to the nation that the judiciary in Kerala can be a role model to be followed by other icons. On the bar and the bench relationship, the Honorable Supreme Court observed us. Administration of justice is a stream which has to be kept pure and clean. It has to be kept unpolluted. Administration of justice is not something which concerns the bench only. It concerns the bar as well. The bar is a principal ground for recruiting judges. Nobody should be able to raise a finger about the conduct of a lawyer. 
actually judges and lawyers are complementary to each other. The primary duty of a lawyer is to inform the court as to the law and the facts of this case and to aid the court to do justice by arriving at the correct conclusions. Good and strong advocacy by the counsel is necessary for the good administration of justice. When e-filing was introduced, the Advocate Association, particularly their IT team, taking note of the difficulties faced by the lawyers, clerks and the litigants, gave their valuable suggestions. With all humility, I would say, to enable us to correct our mistakes. The advocates in Kerala are known for the fairness, operateness, and reasonableness. And in my view, they are also fearless in putting forth that viewpoint. Discharge of my duties became possible only with the support and assistance of the members of the bar and all the stakeholders of the justice delivery system. With my experience in Kerala High Court, I have no hesitation to state the bar has played a crucial role in bringing the glory and majesty of this court in all respects by their valuable contribution both on the judicial and administrative side. I wholeheartedly thank the office bearers, the members of the Kerala High Court Advocates Association for their active support in e-filing and other initiatives adopted by this court, including functioning of paperless courts. I find that women lawyers in Kerala High Court, as in any other judicial establishments across the country today, are constantly pushing the barriers, breaking the glass ceiling, and creating a knife for themselves in this highly competitive atmosphere. In this context, I sincerely congratulate and appreciate the office bearers of the Kerala Federation of Women Lawyers for giving a helping land to the women and The junior members of the bar are good, polite, persuasive, striving hard to match their illustrious seniors. By dear juniors, you have great potential. I'm extremely thankful to Honorable Justice Rishikesh Roy, now Honorable Judge of the Supreme Court, Honorable Justice Abdul Rahim, now Chairman of the Kerala Administrative Tribunal, Honorable Justice Shafiq, Honorable Justice C.T. Ravi Kumar, now Judge of the Supreme Court of India, for the guidance when I assumed office here. My longest partner, Brother Honorable Justice Shaji Bichali was very balanced, helped me a lot during the time when I lost my beloved sister and during the days when my father was sick. I express my sincere gratitude to you, Brother Justice Shaji. The love and affection shown by my brother and sister judges Devan Ramachandran, Narendran, Anu Madam and others, always inquiring about my family members, gave me the feeling that I am in the midst of a family. On the administrative side, and together there are 35 committees functioning in this court, dealing with different subjects. The burden with the heavy judicial work, as a chairman and members of these committees, the Honorable Judges had given me enormous help in discharging my administrative duties. I express my sincere thanks to all the Honorable Judges. I like their active participation of all the judges in the decision-making process. True that it was democratic in all the full court meetings. The staff of this court are so dedicated 
and help the sport to appreciate great heights. I was overwhelmed with a grand farewell and affection shown to me in the yesterday's event. Your mementos will adorn my house as cherished memories. Members of the Clerks Association got themselves trained to the e-initiatives and worked along with the staff. Their support and cooperation is commendable. Late Mr. Dandabani, the former judge of the sport, Mr. Suguna Balan, President of the Senior Advocates Association and other senior advocates unanimously came forward to extend their pro bono services to the poor and needy. They have also enlightened us on many legal matters. I thank the Member Secretary of the Kerala State Legal Service Authority who is implementing OFISA for the various activities undertaken by KELSA. I thank the Director of Academics and other directors of the Kerala Collect Judicial Academy who are spearheading the training activities for the officers as well as others in the, in the Legal Service Authority. Being the Patron and Chief, I also acknowledge the services of the High Court Legal Service Committee and the Kerala Mediation and Consolation Centre. My sincere thanks to the former Honorable Judges, Registrar Generals and other Registrars who had worked with me for their unstinted cooperation and help. But for them, I could not have discharged my duties diligently and promptly. The Registry of the Kerala High Court constantly strive their utmost to ensure smooth sailing for the Honorable Judges to carry on their judicial and administrative functions. My sincere thanks are due to the Registrar General, Mr. Krishna Kumar, the Registrar Vigilance, Mr. Jay Kumar, the Registrar District Judiciary, Mr. Vincent, the Registrar Judicial, Mr. N. V. Neelagandan, the Registrar Administration, A. V. Pradeep Kumar, the Registrar Computerization Come Direct Variety, Mr. Gopa Kumar, the Registrar Finance, Srimati Sudha, the Registrar Recruitment, Mr. Devendra Kumar, Additional Registrar General Administration, Srimati Himalata, and Deputy Director IT B. Joseph Rajesh, who had explained the details of every file and guided me to take appropriate decisions. I wholeheartedly appreciate the Public Relation Officer T.S. Arun and his team for the excellent work, communication, prompt of any event relating to the high. Protocol Officer Mr. Shok, Assistant Protocol Officers Mr. Lars Paul and Mr. Yasef Arafat and other members of the protocol being reserved. Special mention for the dedicated service as me and my family members have frequently traveled. Acknowledge with my gratitude the services rendered by my security officer, Mr. Mesh Kumar, Superintendent of Vehicles, Mr. Srinivas. Chief Librarian Srimati Deepa, who had always helped me even after the quota was whenever I requested for some. Coming to my personal staff, I wholeheartedly thank all my officers and staff members, and in particular my dedicated private secretary C.B. Thomas, whom if I call him at 12 o'clock night, he will come and type something which I require. Additional personal assistant, Mr. Ajit Kumar, now Deputy Registrar, who had taken care of my entire family members and all the friends who had visited Kerala during my tenure. My personal assistants, Mr. Krishna Kumar, Krishna Raj, and Mr. Asis. My court officers, Vedranath and Jiju Chako, were of great help to me in discharging my judicial function. 
I also thank my listing officers, Mr. Girish and Mr. Ajish Kumar. I honestly thank my stenographers, Steemadhi Gigi, Steemadhi Soumya, Steemadhi Vimila, and Sri ML Babu for their untiring and dedicated work. I thank Steemadhi Leka Ji Krishnan Deputy Star, another staff member, and the Chief Justice Secretariat for the good work. The Steeni, my facility assistant, and helped me in compiling my father's handwritten works to preserve, cherish. These handwritten works are from the year 1956 onwards. It was a great assistance in my court and the residence also. A special mention to Siju Zevia, who had assisted me in compilation of the cases which I had delivered in Kerala. I like this young boy. I also acknowledge with gratitude the services rendered by my choppers, Sri Ramesh Chandra, Sri Abdul Offa, and Sri Benson Matthew, who have never refused to undertake any work given to them. I express my sincere thanks and appreciation to former police pilot officers, Mr. Anthony Ferreira and Mr. Hazan, Mr. Manogar, Mr. Arvind Darshan, who are leading the police pilot team presently. My personal security officers, Shafiq and Rakesh, were always vigilant and took care of my security with utmost sincerity. Any step here and there, they will always be with me. Also thank the police inspectors at the residence, Mr. Rajit, Mr. Baiju. My sincere thanks to the civil police officers working on guard duty at the residence. Mr. Philip Jans, Mr. George Sebastian, Mr. Ajish, my cooks deserve special mention. Every time when my friends and relatives come to my visit, my place, either to visit Guruvayur Temple or Sabarimani Temple, or any other place in Kerala, untiring, they will wake up at 6 o'clock, prepare breakfast, lunch, dinner, etc., etc. Today also, they have been preparing food for 25 people at home right from the morning till evening. They are so dedicated and committed to the work. I thank all of them from the bottom of I thank my staff pure Mr. Vikram Singh, the office assistants, Mr. Vinish, Mr. Bhavandas, Mr. Vishnu, Mr. Suma for the assistance. A special mention about the office assistants and staff working at the assistance. Mr. Srinivasa, Srimati Ashwati Nayar, Srimati Jwal Jani, Srimati Rajeshwari, who are always willing to do any work they have now become part of our family members. I thank the gardener, Srimad Bindu, Mr. Robin Matthew, electrician Santilal and Shiju at my residence. I remember with gratitude the services rendered by my former private secretary, Mr. Mohadev, and research assistants, Mr. Ratnakar and Mr. Tarun Drum. A special mention to Mr. Kumar and other advocates who helped us to bring the bondage and fraternity between Tamil Nadu and Kerala judges and also the advocates. During my tenure and in the course of discharge of my duties, if I had committed any error inadvertently and offended anybody, I request you to forgive me. My father, Justice K. Swamidharai, who himself was an astute judge, guided me and was the first one to judge my work. There were times when he appreciated my work. And there were many, many more times when he expressed the criticism, which is one of the driving forces to understand my potential 
And I always said, I'll just do more than what you have done. Always trying to follow his wise words, his words of wisdom came as a source of inspiration to me, which enabled me to tide over the difficult times with ease. He's a bold man. He's a source of strength to all our family members. My wife, Ms. Viola Rajukmari, was a loser because of my elevation. She gave up her 16 years of practice and future prospects in the Madras High Court and set her sails with me. My daughter and son were my strength and secret of my energy. Though I am not devoted enough time for them amidst my work, they have stood by my side. I have been tracking their growth from close quarters, although they may not be aware of this. My beloved sisters and brothers have supported me on my steady growth in the profession, though today I miss some of them. On this occasion, I express my sincere thanks to all senior advocates, lawyers, officers, clerks, who had come all the way to Madras to bless the couple. I sincerely thank Mr. Tamil Raj, President of the Pudu Tamil Nadu and Puducherry Bar Council, Mr. Dhanapalan, Advocate, former Special Counselor, a former personal assistants who have now become assistant registrars and sub assistant registrars, and other staff who have come all the way from Madras and Madurai to witness this farewell. If I had failed to mention anybody, who had helped me to discharge my duties in Kerala. It is not intentional, but your images are there in my heart. The names I might have forgotten. Dear friends who are present here, urge all of you to do your utmost with dedication and spirit. Forget about your results, but the good work you do today is bound to reap rich dividends if not today, but for your progeny a few years down the line. Mother Nature has cast its duty in abundance on this narrow stretch of land tucked in between blue and stirring Arabian Sea, the towering western guards, the exotic hill stations, the calm and charming backwaters, and the lush green low-lying paddy fields makes her all the more attractive. It is indeed a pleasant and memorable experience which I carry with me while I pack my bags back to Chennai. As I look forward to the next chapter of my life, I am filled with optimism, optimism and hope. I will always cherish the memories, the friendship that we have built together and I will remain forever grateful for the privilege of serving alongside with you in this high court. I wish each and every one as Tamaldiya good health, success, and contentment in their lives, both on their official and family, family. I thank Honorable Justice Bhatti, Honorable Judges, Educate General, and officers of the Central and State Government. Respect to seniors and other lawyers, clerks and others who have given me this opportunity to serve in this High Court. And I limit my office, not today as said, that we are on 23rd, but I take this farewell. I'm very happy and privileged man. Thank you. Thank you very much.